Hello my people with thick asses but even thicker hearts, what is up? Today I'm going to be talking about how I wrote and published both of my poetry books. Now just like every other video formatted like this, I have a bunch of timestamps, so if you see something that doesn't apply to you, feel free to skip on through. But I'm going to start off the video by showing you both of my poetry books. You can see the quality and the way I designed it, and then we'll go into how the words came to be and how the production came to be. So these are both of my poetry books. Youth was published in 2017 and Screaming Sweet Nothings was published in 2019. This book has simple font and gloss pages because there are photos Photos. There's exactly 120 pages with about 110, 115 poems. Screaming Sweet Nothings also has 120 pages, but it has closer to 300 poems. There's a little bit more detail in this book. As you can see, I have a photograph that goes across the entire cover, and the inside is all handwritten poems, handmade paintings, and vintage photographs. I did a lot of blackout poetry and journal entries, so it's very, it's a lot more eclectic. So for that reason, I also did gloss pages. Youth is a bit more of a reflection of what it's like to be young, a teenager or a young adult. I wrote about my experiences with everything to do with not school or work. I wrote in both moments where I was feeling so alive, but at the same time so fucking depressed. I talk a lot about loneliness and broken friendships and a long distance relationship I was in, as well as a lot of my firsts. My first time drinking, my first time going to a drive-in movie theater, my first time doing semi-illegal things. The all-encompassing feeling essentially is nostalgia, whereas Screaming Sweet Nothings it's just sad. <laughs> Through poems, I created a narrative of a toxic relationship, and this book goes from the two people meeting to the very end of how you can assume toxic relationships end. There are poems about lust and gaslighting and attachment issues, sexual assault and suicide. It's it's a definitely a heavier book. I have sold twice as many copies of this one than Youth though, so it has done better. I truly don't verbalize the things I went through to create these poems, and I'm considering making a video where I read some of them and explain my experiences and where they came from, but I also don't know if that's a video that anyone cares about. So please let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in, because if not, I can scrap it. But that does lead into actually writing poems. Personally, I never intended to be a poet. I was actually working on a couple novels throughout high school and university before this even happened. At the very beginning of 2017 though, when I was having a very rough time mentally with just everything in life, I fell in love. I met someone online that I really cared about and I all of a sudden felt very inspired to write poems. That notebook had seen better days because even though it started off with very lovey-dovey poems, it did not end that way. The person I was seeing was the worst relationship I've ever been in my entire life and I was in it for over two years. Poetry ended up becoming therapy for me. It was a way to cope with the feelings that I couldn't talk to this person about because they were causing it. And at the time, I was kind of immature. I didn't understand how to set boundaries or realize when I was being manipulated. There was a lot of gaslighting on that person's part and a lot of codependency on my part, which is not a good mix. This person was the one I would go to about issues I was having. So when they were the issue I was having, my notebook listened to me. If you want to write poems, go into your chest cavity. Grab the things that make it hard for you to breathe and start there. It is very therapeutic to write about the people in your life that shouldn't be, to write about your own reactions to those people, to situations that have happened to you in life that you feel like you have no control over, childhood traumas, nostalgia, the best moments of your life and the worst. You need to dissect those situations and find words that can present that scenario in a way that holds the same emotional weight as when it first happened. Poetry isn't easy to write. It can be quicker in terms of it being a shorter form of literature, but the emotional capacity that it takes to write genuine poetry is very difficult. I honestly can't imagine that anyone that just wants to write poetry for the sake of they like the aesthetic of it, they like the mainstream culture that comes along with it, I don't think you can write good poetry coming from that mindset. A poet to be that doesn't want to look 
introspectively isn't going to be a successful one. There are a lot of bad poets out there. If you type in the hashtag poetry into Instagram, you're probably going to come across a lot of just super, super basic ones that don't sound poetic. They just kind of sound like a general statement that everyone says. It's that kind of hashtag relatable poetry, which could potentially get you a little traction online. But if you are genuinely serious about becoming a poet, your words need to be interesting and they need to thoroughly describe your deepest feelings. So now let's say you're there. You have the manifesto, you have the purpose. How do you get inspired to write poetry? My personal favorite, which is a classic, is to daydream to music. Music is so essential to human emotions that if you think about any movie at all with a really sad or depressing scene and take away that music, it usually makes it awkward. Replace it with something happy, it makes it fucking weird. We've been conditioned to view life with soundtracks, whether it is a form of media or our own experience. You even think about when you're sad, you're probably going to be listening to sad music. Those songs will help you feel the things you're feeling more deeply and potentially help release them. If you're daydreaming or laying down with a song, it is very likely it'll inspire you. Other ways to get inspired to write poetry is to journal. Journal entries and poems come from the same place, so often just having that sort of stream of consciousness on a paper can help as a base. You can either go back to the journal entries later and just dissect the words themselves or potentially use the journal entries as something to look back on and to reflect on and conjure up the feelings you want to write about. I would also recommend reading and listening to a lot of poetry yourself as well. So on the reading factor of it, it will get you exposed to good and bad poetry. You'll understand that there's certain poems you can find in every single book. And once you've read enough, you will understand what that means. But in general, I find that when you're reading a poetry book and you come across those certain ones that just make your heart turn inside out, you can use that feeling that that author gave you to write your own. And same with listening to poetry. On YouTube, you can find a channel called Button Poetry and they have a bunch, like an endless amount of slam poems and spoken word poems. And I watch literally every single one that's uploaded. I find there's such a diversity with their poets that not only will you find some that you relate to, but you'll find some that share experiences you would have never thought about. On top of hearing the actual author speaking the words into existence, you can often hear pain in their voice and genuine emotion. So okay, the ball is rolling and you're inspired and you're starting to write, but then all of a sudden you get writer's block. Dun dun dun. You will hear almost every writer complain about this problem. And I find that very interesting since I don't get writer's block anymore. I definitely used to, like literally all the time. I had writer's block more often than I actually wrote, but I've got to a place where that just doesn't happen anymore. The math behind writer's block is very simple. It is exhaustion plus insecurity. You can have one without the other to have writer's block, but often they do go hand in hand. Neurologically, if you are exhausted, you can't be as creative. And being exhausted isn't your fault. It's not anyone's fault except for capitalism, just like everything else. I actually read an article the other day that was talking about creativity amongst Gen Zers and it said that our generation is smarter than ever before because of the access we have to technology and the fact that we're living in a more progressive time and mental health is more accepted to talk about but also because of factors like multitasking. The issue with that though is a lot of this has come from the need to have two jobs the need to always be busy. Capitalism has perpetuated the hustle lifestyle, you know, the big city life, which has made our brains adapt to being in overdrive so that we're always busy and we feel guilty when we're not, which perpetuates capitalism. Okay, Gen Zs are very smart, but we are the least innovative of the generations. We don't have time to be creative and to sit down and enjoy our hobbies without it being an agenda to make money. And just factually, Creativity comes from the absence of thoughts, not the clutter of them. Now, with that said, there are artists that still work under pressure and even make art about being exhausted and endlessly busy. But overall, for our brain to produce the right chemicals to be creative, we need more stillness. And that is not a society that we live in right now. To create it, you need to be very intentional. Your life will just not naturally have lulls anymore. But if you're aware that you can't write because you are always exhausted, you need to make lifestyle changes to allow for that free thinking space. And also not feel guilty if you haven't been productive in 
that free thinking space. And here's the thing, I'm aware that I'm saying this as if it's an easy thing to do. I know it's not. I spent years and years working on this. And the reason it took me a while was because of the second piece of writer's block, insecurity. You really need to think about if you're getting writer's block because of an insecurity. And that list is very extensive. That's something that you need to work on internally and I can't provide an answer for. I can give quick examples though. So as the I don't have enough time thing, I am almost certain that there are things you can cut out in your life that will allow that time to which, why don't you? Are you scared of success? or scared of making your own success? Do you think that effort is gonna make you more exhausted? Are you scared about people really knowing you? That's a big one. Is there a financial worry? Do you have no one in your family that's done this before and you feel very alone with it? Have you never had anyone interested in your hobbies? Are you not even sure if you wanna be a writer in which you're scared of wasting time because you've built some sort of perception about how life is supposed to be and if you waste time, then you're wasting your life, which is not the case, but a lot of people feel that. Those are just some, those are just a little bit. So. Writer's block comes from exhaustion and insecurity and you need to find out where those lie inside of you and then writer's block will be nothing. And on that, when you find yourself writing poems and then starting to visualize what your book is going to look like, the way you're going to format it, if you should start adjusting poems for a storyline, stop it! I find that overthinking the publication process will paralyze you and start changing your writing into something that is less genuine. Just focus on writing poems. You can give yourself a general quota of poems to meet, say I want to write between 100 and 400, and I'll stop when it's in between there and it feels right too. That's a very healthy way to go about it. Sometimes though, what can end up happening is you get to about 30, 50 poems and you start to worry if it's actually good enough to be published. You start to wonder if the poems you're writing are gonna be the ones that you leave out or if they're gonna be like the first ones or the middle ones or the end. And then you're like, well, what poems can I build around this one if it's really good? This one's kind of shitty, so should I hide it within? The thoughts can pile really quickly. That will end up paralyzing you. That will end up creating writer's block. Do your best to not think about what will happen with your poems. Just write the poems as genuinely as you can and then figure it out once you get there. Okay, so now you got there. <laughs> you need to decide if you wanna go with a traditional publishing company or if you wanna self-publish your poetry books. There is a lot less work that goes into traditional publication. It can take up to nine months to even get approved or denied from a place, but let's say you get approved. They will own a lot of the rights to your books. They will tell you what poems you can't put in it, which ones you have to take out. They often want to design the cover and do a lot of the formalities and then you will get royalties off of wherever or however they sell your book. Traditional publishers can be really great for getting your name out there because they're already reputable and they already have other books published under their name that people know about. And if other people like that specific book, maybe they'll like yours and check out yours. At the same time, just because they're traditional doesn't mean they are popular. And there are two very big differences with that. It is near impossible to get published with Penguin Random House if you are not already a somebody. But let's say for the poetry sake, you wanna go with Simon & Schuster or Andrew McNeil's publishing. They're so popular that if you just publish with them, you're pretty much in the clear for selling those books. But at the same time, because they're so popular, it is very difficult to be accepted there. Now, if you go with a lesser known publisher or a local publisher, you are very unlikely to make any amount of money, but they'll be amazing with promoting your book since their audience isn't as big and their whole archive isn't as big, as well as they'll be able to connect you with different author signings and different events. It's all on a minimal scale, but you'll have a lot of personable experiences. I have not published either of my books this way, but I've been working in the book field for four years now. I've worked in a corporate bookstore and an indie bookstore, and so I I understand this world pretty well. On the self-publishing side though, which is what I did for both of my books, it is the most artistic yet time-consuming way to publish. Everything about the book is up to you. You gotta figure out who the editor is. You gotta either design the cover or pay someone to design the cover. You need to format it, every single page, the cut of the book, you need to buy an ISBN for the back of it, and then you need to market it. You need to go to bookstores in person to sell your books on consignment, and you need to either make your own website or sell it on someone else's. And at the end of it all, the money you earn is very minimal because the cost to self-publish can often be about $16 per book. Now, in saying all that, you might be like, wow, I fucking will not do that at all. To which I'll go, 
understandable, but there are ways around it. Everything about my books I did myself. The cover of Screaming Sweet Nothings was a photo I took. I designed the cover of Youth. All the photos in both of these are taken by myself. The vintage photographs and the blackout poetry in here was just scanned on my parents' scanner and both of these were formatted in Word. I got a handful of friends to edit each of these books and give me feedback on the content and I did the work to put these in stores and advertise it on Tumblr and Instagram. There is nothing I don't like about these. When I originally brought the concept of youth to a certain traditional publisher, they wanted to change things that I wouldn't allow them to change. And I'm not going to expose them because I understand it's just all a part of the business, but they wanted to put in those kinds of basic hashtag relatable poems to accompany the genuine ones I wrote just to get a higher page count. And I wasn't about that. I would rather have thinner books knowing every single poem in these matters and makes an impact, leaving the readers wanting more rather than having a thicker book filled with jargon that will leave the reader feeling unsatisfied or as if they've had too much just for the aesthetic purpose of it that's not that's not what i want to do the company that helped me print these off is called book baby and they are a little bit more expensive but the reason i went with them is because i just love the quality they produce i know some people do publish with amazon and personally i have an issue with that it is admittedly cheap to publish with amazon but if you've seen my video where I'm kicking Jeff Bezos's head around in the snow, you understand my thoughts on Amazon. And to me, if you're a genuine writer producing for people and not for money, you wouldn't publish with Amazon. But that is just my personal feelings on the company. I'm not going to go into another rant after I did kick Jeff Bezos's face around. So however you decide to have these books published, the only thing you have to worry about after that is marketing. And that is something you can pay someone to help you out with, but I'm going to assume that if you're watching this video, you understand the basics of YouTube, Instagram, every other social media platform. You just gotta keep promoting your stuff and slowly more people will find out about you and potentially you'll become a best-selling poet. So that is how to write and publish a poetry book. Like I said earlier, if you are interested in me reading some of the poems from my book and explaining the meaning behind them and the experiences that created them, please let me know because I do think it would be a fun video to do. If this does happen to be your first time on my channel and you're kind of interested in what I write, I do have spoken word and slam poems on this channel. So you can kind of just go through playlists and if it's interesting to you and you wanna buy my books, the link is in the description. I sell them on my website, which is peachpiles.com. They're each $18 Canadian. And if you buy one, I have way more love for you than you will ever know. <laughs> I hope the rest of your day goes well. Like, comment, subscribe, all that shit. And I will see you next Wednesday slash Thursday. Goodbye.